Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It has been a while because I've not been feeling too good, but um, the long awaited video is here. So for today, um, I'm basically going to drop the videos that I've been like specifically requested for um, before I go back to like my own selections. So if you guys also have like specific videos, specific schools that you want me to review, please make sure to drop those in the comment section. All right, so let's get right into it. So for a lot of you that probably do not know how to um, navigate a school's website, how do you know that the school's website is legit and all of those things, if you're just starting the school process, you will just see all of these adverts and you'd have to scroll down here to look at the school that ends in .edu, any school that ends in .edu or any, should I say website now, that tells you that that's a legit website for um, the school itself. All right, so we're going to go to Wingate University. There was a comment asking me to also review Wingate University as I have been reviewing um, other schools as regards whether they're fully funded for international students. So for those of you, I'm going to link the video that talks about how to navigate a school's website so that you guys also know how to check certain schools on your own. But for the purpose of this video, which is just to check like um, whether this school is fully funded or not, I am just going to go straight to, I'm just going to go straight to financial aid um, because that's what I'm looking for. Now, if I wanted to check if they offered my courses, I would be going to academics, undergraduate, um, academics, then majors and minors, because I want to see the major that they have for me. Now, under apply and afford, that's where you'd see um, financial aid for this particular school. Um, now, don't think that, oh, I just come to a school's website and I automatically know where it is. No, I always come to the school's website before recording the YouTube videos, just so that I'm not like clicking all over the place. And, you know, we're just getting straight into it. So I clicked financial aid and in this financial aid, I want to see what, what scholarship is available to me. I want to see. So here we are. Um, something that has been coming up a lot um, is the FAFSA. You can see that it is the free application for federal student aid. Please note that as an international student, you cannot apply for the FAFSA. So in a situation whereby a school is telling you to apply for the FAFSA and you know that you are not um, a dual citizen, meaning that you share citizenship or you have a citizenship or you are a citizen of the United States of America or other surrounding islands, then you might want to go back to the school and clarify for them or notify them that I am an international student when I, so, um, when I shared the document about the next steps for people that have submitted their applications, in that document, I'm going to link it down again um, in the description box. In that document, there is a prototype or an email format for those of you that would be emailing schools back and forth, which is typically everybody. So in that prototype, you can see there that I am an international student is included. So for an international student or for a student that wants to know whether a school is fully funded, right? The first thing you want to go and check is the cost. What is the cost of this school and what are the types of aid that they have to offer me? Now, in the situation here, they're telling you, you can see here that majority of the information on this particular web page is for citizens because of the FAFSA that they have mentioned. So here you, you get these scholarships. So these are basically merit scholarships, the Arwin Belk scholarship, the Gateway scholarship, the presidential scholarship transfer and all of those things. So I kind of want to now, you know, read up on it and see the scholarships that they have to offer me. So 
um this particular school has um what's the word they have institutional scholarships so this would be something that you want to keep in mind when you enter a school that you have access to more scholarships for those of you that enter a school um being partially funded you know with the intention of gaining more scholarships so for people that are um, when they say rising sophomore or junior that means you're about to enter your second year of college or university or your third year so a sophomore is someone in their second year of school and a junior is someone in their third year of school in um, the higher institution so for those so if you were pursuing a biology or chemistry degree you just get this and you know, female students. Now this is for people that have been admitted to Wingate University and is given to you by the Office of Admissions. And this would typically fall under merit scholarships because it's at the um, discretion of the school to give it to you. Those, um, then the Jerry E. Maggie scholarship is it says that those eligible for the scholarship will be contacted directly to apply. So now from all of these things that I'm seeing in this school, I'm just seeing a lot of, you know, I have not still seen anything that says that they meet the full demonstrated need for international students, even their merit-based scholarships is not like, they've not mentioned the actual cost, you know. So in a situation like this, what I'm going to do is, if I was a prospective student for Wingate University, then I would be sending an email to the school asking them like, could I know the range of the merit scholarships available? Could I know the range of the scholarships? Some schools will tell you that their um, scholarships range from $1,000 up to full tuition. And keep in mind that you also want to inform them that you're an international student. So for this Wingate University, I do not think that they're fully funded based on information that I have read on their website. Um, so you're going to have to email them to know the exact amount. And in some cases, they'll tell you that there's no exact amount. So applying to Wingate is a 50-50 scenario. But the most important thing is you knowing the total cost of attendance so that when you do email them and if they do end up telling you the, um, the cost, if they're like, oh, we're able to offer you a $30,000 scholarship regard, so far you're accepted to this school, then I know that I want to look at, um, so now I want to see, you can see here that I'm not looking at tuition, I'm not looking at living expenses, I'm looking at the total cost of attendance because like I always say, if a school offers you a $30,000 scholarship and your total cost of attendance is $50,000, you are not fully funded. You still have 20 k to cover. All right. So now another thing is from all of these things that I have checked here, they haven't mentioned anything for um, international students. So whilst, whilst that is... Um, Whilst that is loading, I'm just gonna go down to find um, the information for international students. Right. So if I was to do international, then whilst I'm doing the international, so I also wanted to mention that For the ECG Zoom School, it, um, the registration link will be opened by June 15. And the actual ECG Zoom School starts September. So I want to look here and see the admission process for international students. Um, They're saying that you submit your application, expect a decision within two weeks, have your official high school transcript. So this school, is telling you that they're not going to take um, the unofficial transcript, which is basically a transcript from you. So you kind of want to make sure that your um, counsel includes your transcript in your common app to go with your application. Now, for those of you that want to transfer to this school, you have to do all of this, okay? Transcript evaluation, 
then if admitted, then you now have to pay the hundred dollars. And then if you're applying for a fall semester, you must receive it no later than June first. If admitted, you would get a merit-based scholarship. Now, if additional financial aid is needed, international students applications can submit the financial responsibility form. Now, this looks like their own kind of alternative form from um, instead of them using the ISFA, instead of them using the CSS profile. So you might also want to, you know, read through and just fill it out just in case. Um, so whilst that one is loading, let us, let's look at the cost, the total cost of attendance. So now, like I said, Wingate is a 50-50 school. So keep that in mind when you're applying to this um, school. So as a first year undergraduate, how much should they expect you to be paying? So your tuition will be 40,000 and your room would be 66,000. Um, 6, so let's say 46K. Um, now, if you are hoping to get an apartment or a first year single room where you'd be the only one in your room, that, like all of those vary, but a basic room that's given to typically every first year student is about $6,000. So let's just say 50K for the room all of these fees that you had to pay, meal plan. So let's just say at the end of the day, total cost of attendance is about $55,000, right? Um, $55,000. And that's something that you want to keep in mind when they're giving you a merit-based scholarship. So if they give you a merit-based scholarship of about 30K or 40K, you know that on this financial responsibility form, you will need to show that you 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 need them to cover that remaining 14K for you. So there's a possibility that you could be fully funded by this particular school because they're saying that eligibility for additional aid is determined by the financial information you provide on the financial responsibility form. Please submit the completed form and supporting documents to this email. So, so many of you have asked me like, how do I submit this document? Um, Number one, it varies in each school. This school is asking you to send it to this email. Some schools ask you to send it to the financial aid office email. Some schools ask you to do it through a Dropbox or a secure link. So please keep that in mind when you are doing um, or applying to different schools. Don't um, assume, make sure you come here. So, this form is for people who are not eligible to be considered, um, who are not eligible to complete the, um, the FAFSA. So this typically already looks like the ISFA, it just their own, um, in their own way. So please make sure to, um, so here it says that it is 50,000. And I calculated 55,000. And this 50K is based on the fact that books and health insurance are not included, which you typically would be, it would typically be around $2,000, $3,000 for health insurance. So 55K is still feasible. So this is the same thing as the ISFA, just less like, less um, cumbersome, if I would put it like that, it's just easier to do. So you might want to fill this out just in case you need more financial aid. Um, supporting documents would now probably be like maybe your parents' bank statement, um, maybe their pay slip, maybe um, their business account, just to show that truly, truly your parents can afford that. They're saying that it must be accompanied by a bank letter tax returns if applicable. So if your parents do not file tax or they don't get tax returns, please do not stress yourself about it. Or wage statements of students and parents or guardians. This is for 2022. So they're asking you for information for 2022. Um, so please keep that in mind. And this is the updated one, why? Because they're asking you for 2024 to 2025. So make sure to get the info for the whole of 2022. So you can see here that this school has specified whether they want the bank statement or the bank letter or the pay slip or 
wage statement to be six months or one year. So this is asking for the whole of 2022. So I hope that explains exactly what you need to do. And like I said, Wingate University falls under the 50-50 schools. I think I'll probably just do a playlist where I put like the fully funded schools for international students, schools that are not fully funded, and the 50-50 ones that you need to confirm. All right. So why is it 50-50? Simply because they did not put the amount on their website. That, that's it. So they could be fully funded. Um, because they said the amount varies. And obviously, everybody's GPA, everybody's application also varies. So some people might be fully funded, and some people might not be fully funded. It happens like that, even in fully funded schools also. So I hope this video really helped you guys. And I'll see you guys in my next video where I will be talking about um, Ohio Wesleyan University, whether it is fully funded. So definitely make sure to stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys soon.